the U.S. stated that it would be signing a treaty with Israel and for Israel not to worry about its surrounding enemies because of the treaty and the future U.S.-Israel alliance. This good news from the U.S. did not lessen Israel's tensions or immediate fears. Israel continued to pressure the U.S. for its military assistance because of the hostile countries on its borders. The U.S. told Israel that it could not assist Israel at that, at that particular point in time due to the existing circumstances. The U.S. would not tell Israel at this time the elements of the treaty. However, after continuous pressure from Israel, the U.S. disclosed part of the treaty to to Israel. The U.S. representative told Israel that part of the treaty would consist of military assistance, that the U.S. had developed new technology and missile defense systems that Israel would be granted as part of the new, uh, the new treaty. The U.S. assured Israel that the U.S. would supply Israel with the military needs necessary to assure Israel of defending itself against its surrounding enemies. The missile defense system was only part of the treaty. The Holy Spirit would not reveal other aspects of the treaty. After receiving this assistance, uh, this assurance from the U.S. about the missile defense system, Israel felt secure and no longer uh, in fear of its surrounding enemies. After this, the Spirit began to draw me away from the land I was over, which was Israel. At that time, I heard the voice of the Lord say, quote, this is the tenth nation, end quote. Now, let's look at the meaning of several elements mentioned in the prophecy for their particular interpretation. This interpretation as the, uh, the vision itself was written in 1987 when the prophecy was revealed. The interpretation is as follows. There will be a major reorganization of world power and the role of black men in the United States and abroad. Several worldwide events, many of which have already transpired, will come to pass leading up to revelation of the Ten Nation Kingdom that will be part of the revised Roman Empire. Below I have outlined the vision by topic and we will discuss each topic briefly. Since this revelation, many events that were shown to me have come to pass. Manifestation of this revelation began six months after it was revealed. Palestinians began rioting in the Gaza Strip. Uh, these riots were in the exact geographical location where the young man, the young, the young black man, uh, or the young black king stood in the vision. I was astonished one night as I watched the ABC Nightline program. The ABC Nightline program began to uh, discuss exactly what the Spirit had revealed to me six months earlier. This was just the beginning of the conflict revealed. The Nightline program confirmed the identity of the people represented by the young black team and the Israeli team. It is very humbling when you know the truth about the situation in detail because it has, has been revealed to you by God. The prophecy or the prophet is humble because he knows the knowledge he has been given did not come from his own understanding or his own wisdom. The prophet does not seek the approval or glorification from men because he knows because the knowledge he, he shares is not his own. This became very apparent to me when I observed those who claim to be experts give their expert opinion on the Israel, Israeli Palestinian conflict, and their opinions were completely incorrect. 
After watching the ABC Night Live program, I understood for the first time the true meaning of fantasy. As experts on ABC attempted to give meaning to what was happening in the Bible script, I realized that man is totally lost in this world without God and his, and his Christ. However, man's pride and vanity has blinded him to, to this fight. Deceived by Satan, men refuse to believe their mental uh, capabilities are inferior to God's understanding. Next, uh, what was the meaning of the two kings that appeared in the vision? The physical appearance uh, or the physical country of Israel as we know it today is already in existence. As you are probably aware, Israel was established as a nation in 1948. The two leaders that I saw in the church, one being the king of Israel and the other a king south of Israel in the Gaza Strip, who represents the Palestinians, will confront one another. As of now, Yasaf Arafat is the leader of the Palestinian Liberation Organization of or PLO. This young black man may be the future PLO leader or the leader of the Palestinian country he represents in the vision. The place I saw the young black man south of Israel would have placed him in Gaza Strip. Although at the present time there is no Palestinian state, country, or self rule in the Gaza Strip, there will be. Watch how God works with the, with the attitude for the Palestinians and Israelis to establish a Palestinian state. The Palestinians will recognize the right of Israel to exist and the Israelis will recognize the right of the Palestinian statehood. Both parties will be begrudgingly hurt. God is elevating black men in America and throughout the world and placing them in positions of leadership. Watch and observe the placement of black men in positions of power and authority in the next few years. Black people in America will gain the respect of many world leaders because of their newly acquired economic and political and other people of color. Black people will gain influence on a worldwide basis soon. Why? This is not something that is merely proclaimed by me, the writer, but foreordained by God. I'm Jane Hill in Washington, D.C. This is a historic moment. The United States of America has elected its first black president. Barack Obama will be the 44th U.S. president to enter the White House after a sweeping victory. Millions of supporters have been celebrating across the United States. Barack Obama will be the 44th president of the United States. This was the immediate reaction in New York's Times Square. Sheer joy. And this the response back in Chicago. Among the ecstasy, tears too. For Jesse Jackson, one of the country's civil rights champions, a day perhaps he never thought he would see. And here in Washington, D.C., a mood of jubilation. We are taking the White House after eight years of misery. It means America's back, baby been a long time coming but tonight because of what we did on this day in this election at this defining moment change has come to America this is a place where he calls home Chicago it was just down the road in Springfield Illinois that the Democrat kicked off his bid for euphoria all over the country and here in front of the White House suggests that America may have recaptured a spirit of optimism the thought of an African-American inside the White House is no longer a dream. This is more than just a personal victory for Barack Obama and the Democratic Party. This is a watershed in American history. Jonathan Beale, BBC News, Washington. And on behalf of the American people, welcome to the United States.
just completed uh, an excellent one-on-one -on -one discussion uh, with Prime Minister Netanyahu, and I want to welcome him back to the White House. Uh, yeah, I want to, first of all, thank him for uh, the, the wonderful statement that he made uh, in honor of the 4th of July, our Independence Day, uh, when he was still in Israel. Uh, and it Barriers as old as America itself. He's looking ahead to the future. He has said his first order of presidential business will be to tackle the American economy. And he's pledged to withdraw most of U.S. troops from Iraq within 16 months. Ladies and gentlemen, you have done me a great honor and at the same time bestowed a great responsibility in electing me the seventh Secretary General of the United Nations. Within the next 15 years, I believe we can halve the population of people living in extreme poverty, ensure that all children, girls and boys alike, and particularly girls, receive a full primary education, and halt the spread of HIV AIDS. In 20 years, we can also transform the lives of 100 million slum dwellers around the world. And I believe we should be able to offer all young people between 15 and 24 the chance of decent work. These targets are realistic if we take full advantage of the opportunities offered by globalization and the revolution in information technology. Peace must be sought above all because it is the condition for every member of the human family to live a life of dignity and security. When states decide to use force to deal with broader threats, to international peace and security, there is no substitute for the unique legitimacy provided by the United Nations.